Okay. So verse 10. All right. Hey, I like holding my new book. Say that we have not parse uh, Hamar uh, Hamar take on it. First person plural. Uh, perfect? perfect. Good. Yes, it's a perfect because it's got the kappa there. But, yeah. So in other words, it, I have not committed a sin in the past, and I'm not guilty of it in the present. Would be one of the ways to think about it. So again, this is the denial of having committed a sin. So notice earlier he said, I don't have sin. Now he says, I haven't committed a sin. And again, the whole point is if we do that. Now, notice also, you had these two denials, and in the middle is confession. That's a key aspect of construction. Is what he's done there. You have the key aspect of construction there. And in fact, the chiasm may even go further into the next verses and proceed, and, and proceed into verse uh, 7. In other words, if we're in the light, uh, his blood is cleansing us, and in and, and verses 1 and 2 of chapter 2, it talks about him being the propitiation for our sins. So there may be a strong chiasm here, you know, there's a good possibility of a chiasm here. And the focal point of the chiasm is the need to confess our sin. Uh, the way I interpret this section is to say that the key to experiencing eternal life is honesty with God about sin. When I'm honest with God about my sin, I can walk in the light and have fellowship with Him. When I'm dishonest about my sin, I am deceived. I think I'm in the light, but in reality, I'm not. And uh, when I'm honest with God about my sin, the blood of Jesus, His Son, is cleansing me moment by moment, day by day, hour by hour of my sin. And so the, the, the completed work of Christ on the cross is a continuous work in my life. Some people teach that, you know, once Jesus died on the cross, all sins were forgiven, past, present, future, and you don't even have to confess sin anymore because it's already forgiven. You just simply, when you sin, you say, oh, that was already forgiven. Thank you. And go on. But that's not what John is teaching here. He's really saying that in my dialogue with God and in my daily relationship with God, I am honest with God about my sin. And in that, I then experience God's purity. How? Because Jesus' blood is cleansing me moment by moment and making me pure. And so that's how I can walk in God's moral purity. Not by my own effort, but by the work of God when I'm just simply honest with Him about my sin. Exciting theology. And, and um, how would you answer those people who still see this as a test of life when he uses the phrase, his word is not in us? Um, I think, uh, again, there is, he's saying uh, his word is not really influencing me. What God has said has no influence because I think here there's an understood abiding. Uh, again, going back to the upper room, John 15, and the idea of abiding, and his word abiding in us. And so there's an understood abiding in this context, uh, and the influence there. But also, the key is we. John is including himself as someone who could experience this. So John is saying that he himself, if he's not honest with God, will be in the darkness, not the light, and the blood of the Son won't be cleansing him. And all that. So you've got to be talking about not justification, but sanctification yeah. realities. Yeah. It's interesting what the use of the word koinonia is that it brings all the way back to the Garden of Eden because koinonia is what Adam lost. That's right. Oh. Yeah. yeah. The sort of thing that, that, that I thought we were giving last term was that it was a, a, a testament, an assurance. Mm -hmm. And I hear basically the same idea fellowship assurance, you mm -hmm. know, you're walking yeah. Not that, you know, Dr. Stanley was saying that it was a test of our salvation. 
I don't know. That's the way I understood yeah. it. Yeah. There's a little. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't referring to him when I asked the question. Yeah. I, I just. But there but are I'm, those. There are those who see yeah. it as test of life. Yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't. Okay. Okay. I'm not yeah. saying that yeah. you were. Yeah. No, I'm just trying to say. Yeah. In yeah. fact, you know, yeah. I always thought of it as the, the issue of fellowship. Yeah. Whether it's fellowship with God later talks about right. fellowship with each other. Right. But I always saw this whole idea of fellowship, and then we started talking about a test. Yeah. And being sure that you're saved. Yeah. Well, in fact, it, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And in fact, see, that would be Doc, Dr. Stanley is taking the test of life view. That's what he's doing. He would be more the test of life view. And uh, and in fact, that's the dominant view. Uh, I mean, nine out of ten people would hold that. Idea, he didn't uh, say that. Right. He, he, about yeah. yeah, he might be milder than that. Yeah. And um, whereas others are saying, this is how you figure out if you're saved or not. He might be saying, this is how you assure yourself of your salvation. Well, actually, yeah. when you take his view to its logical conclusion, that really is it. He tried to water that down. But I, I really think that was the bottom line. Yeah. yeah. And, and, well, and, and, and to me, it seemed like what he was saying was that um, not that by not doing this, you're not saved. It's just this is how you can see that you are saved. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. not that. Uh, right. Yeah, you assure yourself of your salvation, which is the test of life for you. Um, uh, and uh, it's uh, and now, now what's fun is is when you read through the commentaries, is to find how many about eighty percent of the people are inconsistent. They'll flip flop back and forth between the two views, depending on which verse they're on. And and you might find that he's much the same way because uh, uh, they don't see it as a uh, as as a whole. And uh, uh, well, someone has seen First John five as the yeah. As the as as the, the purpose, purpose, the purpose statement. statement, yeah, and they would go with the test of life view, and in fact, Dr. Stevens probably sees that as the purpose yeah, of the book. And what was that verse? Five fourteen. Thirteen. Five thirteen. These things I written you so that you may know that you have eternal life. Yeah. That's and uh, uh, yeah, the uh, the weakness of that is that the, these things I have written is a pattern throughout First John. That he's re he says the things that I've just now written, in other words, the immediate context is, has this purpose behind it. That's the and same argument he was using against that, that other argument. That's right. That these things, you know, repeated throughout, how can you say he was just what you're talking about? Yeah. Was it or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Hmm. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a it's a fun thing there. I think neither of the purpose statements is statements is the key. The key oh, is the prologue and the subject. Right. With John, it's always the prologue. That's the key. And not the purpose statement. Same thing in the, in, in the Gospel of John. The purpose statement at the end of the book, they make as a Gospel statement. These, you know, these things I've written you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may have eternal life in that uh, uh, continuing. But actually, when, 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 when you believe that Jesus is the Christ and believe and, and believing you may have life. life. But the, the, the interesting thing is in the, uh, in the Greek, uh, there is a textual problem there. That, uh, but the way the evidence indicates is the idea that he's writing and saying, I'm writing these things so that you will continue to believe that Jesus is Christ, not so that you'll start believing. Mm -hmm. And that as you continue to believe, you will experience life. It's part of Yeah, and, it's, and it's, it's participial, and it's the idea of he's writing to believers to keep them believing because it's in believing. And here's a key. A believer only experiences eternal life by faith. And it's only by believing the right things. So a Christian can possess eternal life but not experience it if they don't believe the right things about Jesus. That's a part of First John. It's interesting that in believing the right things about Jesus is that uh, when John says he's writing these things, he's writing to every age. That's right. Father, young yeah. man, yeah. younger children, and then younger children. Yeah. They, and you could only write to that kind of an audience if you yeah. want to use that kind of Christ as a subject. That's right. Yeah. And uh, also, one of the things, you know, in, in, in arguing about uh, uh, the Gospel of John's purpose, you have to remember, they didn't write gospel tracts back then. You couldn't afford it. The paper cost too much. Think about it. The paper cost like equivalent of $100 a sheet. And, uh, and, the lost people weren't interested. It was written, in fact, we know from church history that it was written by John at the request of the church. They wanted him to write for them. So it was written to, to believers. So when you understand that, then you have to start taking what he says in that context. 
Gospel of John too? Mm -hmm. In fact, the Gospel of John was written specifically at the request of the people in his church. And the free grace people say that's the, the main, yeah. main uh, evangelistic book. Yeah, they do. And I think they're wrong. Well, I'm going to really get confused by the time we're <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, you know what they say. When you have two theologians, you have three so views. You were doing the discipleship, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The key to discipleship there. Yeah. Well, no, the key in the Gospel of John is understanding what eternal life is and how one goes about experiencing it, and it's through a relationship with a person, Jesus. Now, in the Gospel of John, there are clear instances where it is a Gospel message, woman at the well. But uh, I've tried to argue, in fact, uh, I'm hoping one of the papers that I did at ETS, which may be published in the GES Journal, is one where I argue that Nicodemus was a believer. And Jesus isn't talking to Nicodemus about how to get saved. Oh, no. boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to bring in a copy of that paper and let you see my uh, wild ideas here. So John 3.16 isn't a salvation verse? Uh, yes, it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> it is, because Jesus is talking to the Sanhedrin through Nicodemus and telling them what they must do. And it all has to do with the pronouns. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes Jesus uses the plural, sometimes he uses the singular. And so you think, wait, 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 you think Nicodemus was saved? Yes, without a doubt. That first encounter in John. Yes. Said, he was already believing before that conversation. Uh huh. And in fact, uh, he's he is one of the crowd in chapter two that believed in Jesus, but Jesus didn't believe in them because he knew what was in every man's heart. Mm -hmm. And see, from John 2 through 6, there's a theme, the omniscience of Christ, that he looks into the hearts of people and knows their motives. And in this paper, what I argue is that Nicodemus is an example of a believing crowd that Jesus can't trust. The woman at the well is an example of a non-believer that Jesus can trust. And he entrusts her with the truth that he's the Messiah. And she comes to faith. The royal official is a believer that Jesus can trust. He tells him, no, I'm not going to give you a sign. Go home and your son will be healed. And the man says, you got it. And he goes home the next day. Because he has that much faith. And then the man at the pool of Bethesda is a non-believer that Jesus can't trust. Jesus knows he's going to betray him. And it's interesting. He's the one guy that never says believed in Jesus. Mm -hmm. and so you've got all four kinds of people. And then in chapter 6, in chapter 2 you had the multitude who believed in Jesus. In chapter 6 you have a multitude that doesn't believe in Jesus and Jesus says so. And John uh, it says, yes, they don't believe and neither did Judas. So it's, that's the theme there. Now the reason I say Nicodemus was a believer is because later on in chapter 11, Nicodemus is identifying with that group of of uh, uh, rulers who were believing in Jesus in contrast to those who didn't believe in him and wanted to kill him. There were those who believed in him but didn't confess him openly because of fear of the Jews. And Nicodemus is in that category. A yeah. believer who was yeah. coward. So that's how I would see it. I see that in that part of John. I guess I'm just struggling with the other. He believed but he didn't really have a clue what he was believing. No, I think he did. He didn't understand. He, I think he recognized Jesus for who he was. He did. But he came representing the, the Sanhedrin. Yeah. And you wonder why they sent him. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think they sent him as such. I think he came, though, speaking as if he was from them. And in fact, he fits the theme of light and darkness. You know, everyone who comes to the light comes to show their deeds. He came to the light. See? So, yeah, it's at night that he comes to the light. Whereas others reject the light. So anyhow, there's, there, there's some interesting things. Well, we need to keep keep translating here. Who's, who's next? Who's next? Me? Yeah. Okay, so we're, okay. Two one. Technia mu talita grafo kumen hina me hamar teta kai eontis hamar te. Now that one is eon. Now, that's a smooth reading mark. Oh, that and, and the reason I bring that up is because the rough reading mark becomes 
a, a different word. Okay. Kaya on tis hamarte parakale ton echomen pras ton patera iesu christan de kayon. Right. Right. Okay. Um, I have little children. This I write. And again, ta ta. These things. Plural. These things, okay. Mm -hmm. These things. These things I write to you. you. In order that you may not sin. Is that a. Um, That's a subjunctive. Again, yeah. subjunctive. Yeah, because it knows Hamar Tate. The, okay, the LinkedIn. Okay, I got LinkedIn. Okay. And if um, anyone sins, or anyone. Um, I know, again, it's a third class. That on, third class condition. Okay. It may or may not, if anyone sins. Oh, okay. If anyone sins, an advocate we have with the Father, Jesus Christ, the right, or Jesus the righteous, Christ, the righteous. Okay. Yeah, the the guy on there is in apposition again. It's just uh, there to define Jesus, Jesus, the, the righteous one. Yeah. And uh, Paracleton, an advocate. Where else have we seen this term used? Of the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, Paracletos. Yeah, in the upper room. But notice again the possible if anyone should sin, and they may or may not, we have, again, he includes himself in that group, we have a Paraclete with the Father. And notice again he uses cross, ton, patera. Using that construction, I think, is significant in the presence of the Father. That, that cross again with the accusative, that can, that can be with them. That's right. It carries a sense of, of a presence to or toward or in the presence of, and contrast, in other words, distinct from but present with. It, it can carry that nuance, which is how it's used in uh, John 1, 1 through 3. Okay, verse 2. Kai on tis elasmas estu peri. Ton amatio, primo duperi, ton inmeturo de mana, ala kai peri, alu tu cosmo. Okay. And he is the propitiation concerning our sins, not. Concerning our hours only, right. but also concerning the whole world. Good. Yeah. Now this is a significant verse theologically. Notice he himself is propitiation. The last mosque does not have the article because it is the functioning as the predicate right. nominative. Yeah, Altos is the subject. He himself, emphasis again, he himself is the propitiation. We, and we would translate the propitiation, not a propitiation, there's not others. He himself is the propitiation. Now here the peri is about concerning, or we would carry it with a sense of on behalf of, but his, his, or with regard to. In other words, he's a propitiation for our sins. Now what is a propitiation, the last mass? What does it mean to be propitiated? The satisfaction of God's wrath for some sin. In other words, like remember the uh, bubblegum in the center and uh, the, or the tax collector and it says, the Lord, uh, often it's translated, be gracious to me, but it actually is, uh, or have mercy on me, it actually is, be propitiated towards me. In other words, let your wrath be satisfied with regard to me. So he satisfies God's wrath on behalf of our sins. Or with regard to our sins. He is, he is the one who takes care of the wrath. How? We've already been told his blood. His death. By his death. But notice the key theology here. But not concerning ours only. 
but strong adversity. Allah, remember, dead is a weak adversity. Allah is a strong adversity. But in contrast to ours only, also concerning the whole world. And I think this is in the question of limited or unlimited atonement. This is the most critical verse. Because Jesus propitiated the wrath of God towards the whole world when he died on the cross. And that's why Paul says, God has reconciled himself to us, and now he's given us the ministry of reconciliation to which we tell the world to be reconciled to God. See, so God took the initiative, he reconciled himself through Christ's death, not only for the, the elect, but for the non-elect as well. The theology talks about the extent and the intent. Yeah. So that's an accurate way to think. That's right, so yeah. The, the extent of the propitiation is, is the, whole, the whole world. The whole world, but it was only intended for the elect. Is that how you look at that? Um, no, I would say, you know, this is one place where, where I would differ. Um, I would say it is, it, uh, Jesus' death was indeed for every person intentionally, but it is, all, uh, how to say, sufficient for all, but efficient only for the elect. And that it's only those who come to faith who experience its benefits, although his death paid the price for the sin of the non-regenerate and non-elect. So that's okay. This is what House was teasing us with in theology. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah. how is it that anyone goes to hell for their sins if Christ paid for the sins that's of right. the world? Why do people go to hell? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what, you're, that's what you're talking about. That's right. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. You don't experience the benefits of his death apart from... Faith. And Someone see, here's like a work, though. Well, faith, not but see, Ephesians 2 tells us faith is not a work. God has said, because faith is believing God. It's not anything you do, it's what you believe. And you took God at His word. But here's the key, too, uh, is that it's a person's destiny, you know, a person becomes destined for heaven, not when they believe in Jesus. I mean, time-wise, that's true. But we're destined for heaven when God the Father judicially declares us righteous. He justifies us. It's the act of God in justifying that determines one's destiny. Not the death of Jesus in particular. But he applies the death of Jesus to that person. And that's where I say it's sufficient for all because Jesus' death could save everybody. But it's only when it's applied to that person by the judicial act of God the Father that it becomes sufficient or efficient in that person's life to cause them to become regenerate and be saved. And that's where we got track when we say Christ's death paid for all the sins right. of the world because paid it, really gets you into something. That's right. That's a that life. yeah. That's not that's not a biblical concept. Yeah. That's that's yeah. An, an American concept. The yeah. idea of paying. There are some great hymns. Jesus paid it all. all but they might, that's right. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So that's, that's one of the challenges. But this verse is very helpful because it tells us that clearly he's the, he is the propitiation for the whole world. You can't get around that. Wait a minute. Just, you just said something that triggered a thought. Doesn't the idea of paid, isn't that linked with the concept of redemption? Uh-huh. And that's why so, you can't say Jesus well, paid for everybody's he sins. Redeemed everybody. he, 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 he experienced the punishment for everybody's sin. See, he suffered the consequences of everybody's sin. But uh, and there is a place where it talks about hey, he paid a ransom price to God the Father for those of us who are elect. So for me, he paid it all. That's right. For you, he paid it all. But for the non-elect, all to him I owe. That's right. That's, that's right. All to him you owe. That's right. That's what the song. That's right. Says, and and the song is correct. Yeah, Jesus <laughs> paid it all. All to him I owe. Yeah, it's really the song of a believer rejoicing in the testament. cleansing of Christ. Exactly. Yeah, it's not it's not a how to get saved song. But uh, yeah, it's, it's someone caught that. I'm wondering. But uh, <laughs> so do people go to hell because of their sins or because they fail to um, enact the propitiation? I say they they go to hell because they fail to enact the propitiation because they fail to exercise that faith in God. 
Now, how hot of a spot in hell they get is determined by their works. Mm -hmm. sure. But their works don't send them there. Their works just determine where they splash in. And, uh, so, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's all by faith. Our destiny is determined by faith or no faith. Not by our works. But God. But rewards or punishment but are determined by our works. grace idea that God mm -hmm. gives us the ability to believe. So yeah. In the end, it all comes back to His work. To His work. Yeah, it's all God. Yeah. And that's why we'll be so happy in heaven. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's why I'm going to be so happy going, why me? You know, that, 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 that'll be the big song we all sing in heaven. Why me? Why me? Yeah. I still can't figure out why me? Why are you so kind to me? Let me in on it. He's just going to say, would you like me to change my mind? <laughs> <laughs> he'll say, Grace. Yeah. My choice. He'll, he'll, he'll never explain why. Yeah, I'm sure of that. We'll just always rejoice in it. Well, let's, uh, let's move on to chapter 2. I'll let y'all finish this chapter. It's such nice, easy stuff. And, uh, and we move to John 15. you want us to turn something in, written out? Uh, just, just at the end of the quarter, you'll hand these to me while you're taking the final, and I'll go through it. Check out, like we did. You're familiar with that, yeah? I, I just go through. I'm not looking for right answers. I'm just looking that you've translated, and you can write it on you here. To write it in here. Yeah, you can write it here. Yeah, yeah. That's how I did. That, yeah, yeah. In fact, that's that's why they give you the space to be able to do it. Ah, I see. He's already had the game. <laughs> I knew. <It's>, yeah. <laughs> Been nice to know. And, and, and I said you can write corrections and, and, and other notes as well. I'm just looking to see that you've actually gone through and, and, and done the translating. Do you want us to go back and run all the translation that we, did, we just did work? No, no, no. I thought you don't need to. No. So and in fact, that's what you can do. So this is an addition to the translation we have here. That's right. Then we also do additional chapters. These, these, yeah. These We'll hand it also. Yeah. Uh -huh. But you're only going to look at this at the end of the. Term. Right. That and, and those, yeah. Okay. And those, you, you, you want these done before class normally, right? Yeah. So we just read it. Yeah. And, and, and then we'll be able to go through it faster yeah. than, than what we're doing tonight. So when we come on Monday, do we have then four chapters done? Or. Um, well, I would say this. On these first two chapters, I'll be a, I'll, I'll practice the grace uh, on y'all on those. But beginning with chapter three, yes, come with chapters three and four done. And and John seventeen and First Timothy, First Timothy. No, uh, those those we'll just do in class. Those don't those don't do those. Just do the workbook to bring to class. Oh, I we those no, those we're going to just pull pull out, open up in here and use this tool and do it in class. Yeah. And as we have time, we're, we're going to work through those in class. Do we have those at the school? Do they have some of those at the school? Uh-huh, yeah, they've got, they, yeah, they should still, they, they should have some more. Okay. As far as translating, it's all coming out of here. Yeah, or since you've got that, yeah. do, do you already have Sake Kubo? Yeah, I already have Sake Kubo. Well, then just bring Sake Kubo. Yeah, don't need to okay. repeat on this. Yeah, see, this is the one with the dictionary. Yeah. Last quarter, I was just using this. Yeah. When I came to work, so I didn't sleep before. I just flip back, yeah. And, and, and you can do it. It goes a little slower, but yeah. yeah. Can you look at the flashcards? Um, the vocabulary. Uh -huh. It would be the same flashcards if, if you bought the set. Oh, you didn't? I don't have them. I don't think. I don't have them? Yeah, okay. I like this. Yeah, you can get a set. It's got about a thousand cards in it. And um, uh, they'll have all the words that occur down about nine or ten times. So that uh, you don't have to write them all out. And, uh, I don't know. Well, they, they should. Have, they they're they're biz ed cards. Is the yeah? They they yeah, have yeah. Greek tutor. I bought some from there. The ones that yeah. Cyrus and I had, we bought it. They have that the Western. Yeah. The ones that I got were in Greek tutor. Yeah, in Greek tutor. Yeah. yeah. And but they they don't they only go three hundred times. Yeah, they don't yeah. have yeah. the others. Yeah, this one you get a box and it's got it's got about a thousand of them and, and it'll, it'll go down to about mm -hmm. it's got every word that occurs. I know fifteen times or more and it may go down as much as ten. And who makes those? How do I spell that? Viz, V I S, and then uh, capital E D is the company that does them. Their, uh, I tried to find one. Yeah. 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 Y
Julius from way Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Sure, yeah. 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 yeah, their visit cards. And, and they got them for all kinds of languages. This is one of those things that comes with a little red box. And, um, Are they pretty pricey? Or... No, they're not real expensive. I can't remember. I'll have to buy those sets. I'm missing like 100 yeah. words. Yeah. 100 of the cards. I got it the other day. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Yeah, now which hundred are missing? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and what I did is, I then bought a blank one, and as I added vocabulary beyond those, then I added those, and I had to uh, cycle through. I'll check, I'll, I'll, I'll check with Carl and see if he can track them down. Or, another way to do it, on your computer you can get a flashcard program. I think, I don't know if Greek Tutor has it, but there are some. Bioworks has Yeah, Bioworks has one. Where you can get a flashcard that that'll have them, and and uh, and at least one of them has where you can tell them, like the Metzger's book, the all the words this amount of times, and it puts them right in. So. What, what was the sake? Sake Kubo. What is that? That's uh, that's that's the author's name. It's a book. Uh, it's got a title. It's about this long, <coughs> all the way across the thing. <laughs> you know, like Greek readers saying them for it. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and uh, what he did was, what, what, was he went through by chapter and verse, and he lists for every verse all the words that occur 50 times or less in that verse. And it'll tell you how many times it occurs in that book of the Bible. You know, how many times total, how many times in that book. Uh, and uh, it has a basic definition. And he's, most, he's about 99% right. There, 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 there's a few spots where he missed it. You know, he misspelled the word. His name? his name is Sake, S-A-K-E, and then, uh, Japanese? This, yeah, he, Japanese origin, and then K-U-B-O, that's the guy's name, and, uh, Sake, yeah, and he's, he's always just called Sake Kubo, I mean, the, the thing is a real long time, yeah, uh, so we should buy some Sake? Yeah. 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 So, okay, well, let's do a little translating out of John 15. And uh, my favorite chapter of the Bible, just about. And again, we can see some interesting constructions here. Uh, to move faster, we'll just go ahead and translate the second half at the time. And um, then we'll talk about some of the constructions. Now, who, who, was, who did last? You did. Didn't you, Mark? Oh, I did. You did. Oh, okay. Well, we get to start back around here with you. Um, just translate? Yeah. I myself am the mind. The true vine. Good, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And my father is the vine dresser. Great. Notice we got two of these predicate nouns of constructions once again. I am, and notice the ha ampelos has, or he ampelos, has the article, but it's not the subject. You, you wouldn't translate it, the vine, the true vine is me. Because again, I, ego, a me, I am, clear I am statement. And uh, ego being a, 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 a pronoun then becomes the subject. I am the true vine. And notice ha pater mu, ha georgos, estin. And here, notice, both have the article. So the first one is the subject, the second one is the predicate nominative. So you would not translate it, the farmer is my father. <laughs> You'd say, my father is the mind dresser, the farmer, husband. But this is a good example of, again, the, uh, the, 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 the construction with a me, where both have the article, so you know the first one is the subject, and the second one is the predicate nominative. That makes sense. Okay, next. Same as the branch. Of every branch. In me, uh, not bearing fruit, mm -hmm. he okay, he lifts up, mm -hmm. lifts up. What did you 
say it gets the app. You know, the get the app. You get an app. Every time Dr. House would give us the app, something would go lops off. Lops off. Because we had that discussion. Right, yeah. In every branch, bearing fruit, he planted. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, he planted this in order that it might bear a whole fruit. Good. Yeah, the alta there, after he cleanses, is in the, which case? Uh, neuter. It's neuter. Well, it's neuter nominative. It's either neuter nominative or accusative. Based on its location, next to cleanses, he cleanses, it would be accusative. He cleanses it. He cleanses it. And it's, and its antecedent is the branch earlier. Right. Okay. So every branch, every branch in me not bearing fruit. Now the significance there is the not bearing. Pharon is a let's parse that. It's from Pharaoh. To bear. It's a participle, right? It's a participle. It's a present participle. So, why is that significant? Because the fruit is in the process of not, or the branch is in the process, here, this, this participle. What do we know about participles? If it doesn't have the article, it tells you who or when. Article tells you who, no article tells you when. A, an arthrus article, uh, an, an, ar, an, an arthrus participle is linked to the main verb time-wise. So a present participle is going to be, its action is going to be occurring continuous, continuous with the main verb at the time of the main verb. If it was an aorist art participle, that's right. The the uh, the action would have preceded the action, the main verb. A future participle, the action follows the action of the main verb. So the main verb here is ire. He lifts it up. So when does he lift it up? While it's not bearing fruit. Okay. Now. The in me, every branch in me. Uh, I find it interesting. There was one uh, ar ar article I read when I was studying this, where the guy tried to move in me to a different location in the sentence. And what he did was he he made it say this: every branch not bearing fruit in me. Now that changes the meaning of the verse significantly, because this branch is in. Christ. That's the, 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 the branch in Christ not bearing fruit. Mm -hmm. To move the in me to a different location changes the meaning of the verse. But here, Jesus is clearly saying, this branch is in me, mm -hmm. but it's not bearing fruit. But that branch in me not bearing fruit, he lifts up. And every fruit bearing one, every one that bears fruit, now it's Notice here the chi, pan, ta, karpon, pharon. There's an understood branch there. Right. Everyone. Yeah, everyone. Bearing fruit, present tense again, present participle. Kathere. He cleanses. Now, this term from kathiro, notice the play on sounds from iro to kathiro, ire to kathire. There's a play on sounds there, and, that, and that's a Hebrew practice playing on the, the sounding of the words. But also, kathire is a uh, horticultural term, a viticultural term from that time period for the suckering process on fruiting branches. Uh, and ire is not contained in any of the literature, but it would imply that there, there, were, there was the practice of taking non-fruiting branches and tying them up on the trellis 
because if you leave them on the ground, they set roots and stop producing. But they didn't cut them off. Uh, uh, one of the things that I found is that for every, every, every branch that bore fruit, they always kept four branches that didn't on the vine. So for every fruiting branch, they would keep four non-fruiting branches on the vine. So Jesus is describing that process. Uh, but notice, he cleanses it in order that it may bear more fruit. And again, the henna, carpon, fere is the subjunctive, because the henna plus the subjunctive, in order that it might bear more fruit. Not a guarantee. It's a desire. Uh, and the cathire, by the way, is a technical term for ceremonial cleanness in other places. It was the term they used for ceremonial cleansing. So the cleansing here, there's a little play on words as well. Okay, next verse. Um, now you uh, are clean through the word uh, which was spoken uh, to you. Good. Okay, um, <clears throat> tell me about Cathairo. Uh, uh, Catharoy. Um, Thyro. Mm -hmm. um, it. I'll give you a hint. It's a participle. Present person? Yeah, it's a present participle. Nominative masculine plural. Parallel to Humaeus. Pronoun, non masculine, plural. You got este, second person plural. With the humaeus, it's the second person plural. So how is Katha, Katha Roy functioning? It's a predicate nominative. It's a predicate nominative without the article. So this one, even though it's a participle, it's in an arthrus, it's functioning as an, an arthrus noun, so it's not telling you when, but it's telling you who. It's as if it has the article. Okay. The rule about article tells you who, no article tells you when, only applies unless it's a, an arthrus, you know, functioning as an, an arthrus noun. So this one is still telling you who. You are the clean ones. And an A day there is the idea of already. You are already cleansed or clean. Through diaton, notice diaton. Is it through? Yes. With the accusative? Dia plus the accusative? It's because of. Dia plus the genitive is through. You're already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. And again, the. Uh, Notice the la, 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 leka is perfect. Yeah, you got reduplication and you got the kappa. So it's something, and, and what's the concept behind the perfect? Completed action in the past with continual results. So in other words, I told you some things and they still stand true. That, that would be the idea. The things that I have told you would still continue to be true to this day. Good. Verse 4. Well, does that remain? Yes, remain or abide. Abide in the... Kai. Yeah, Kai Ego. Oh, That's a combination word. Okay. And I in you? Mm-hmm. Kathos is not oh, wait, Kalos, wait. but just, just as. as. Just as, okay, just as the branch, the branch is not able to bear fruit from the one himself. Yeah. Oh, for, okay. From himself. Um, if he is not remaining in. 
uh, um, hello? The vine. Oh, okay. The vine. And let's see. Uh, this. Hutos here in this case would be thus. Oh, oh, okay. Thus, not. Uh, if you are not in. Not remaining in. Okay, good. You're close, you're close there. <laughs> yeah, thus, may not is. Imperative? Is an imperative. You abide in me. Now, it's a, is it a present or aorist imperative? Present. It's a present. It's a content, so it's the idea of keep abiding in me. Continue to abide in me, not start abiding in me. Continue to abide in me, and I in you. In other words, let's maintain this relationship that we have. Mutual abiding. Just as, now here he's giving an example of what he means. Just as the branch is not able to bear fruit apart from itself, if it does not abide in the vine, thus, in other words, also y'all, you neither. In other words, you can't bear fruit if you don't abide in me. Now, the significant thing is, he's talking to the eleven, who are all regenerate. And he says, you won't bear fruit. Now, notice he has already said, you have, you're ready to bear fruit because you have been cleansed. You've been pruned by my Father, you've been cleaned up by my Father in order to bear fruit, but you still won't bear fruit apart from abiding in me. Can you, can you translate from uh, Utos? Yes. So that's, that's Thus, not, not, or neither, neither or not. Neither you. Neither you, because notice the humanus there is the nominative. You, in other words, you, there's an implied, thus you are not able to bear fruit. There's an understood able to bear fruit, or you will not bear fruit. So, et on is? Et on is third class condition, if not in me, you should abide. In other words, or, or this, the way we would translate it is unless in me you abide. In other words, you will not bear fruit except under the condition of the fact that you're abiding in me. I have a question. Uh -huh. um, the rain of... Yes. Head up to it. Right. The way you translated it, it almost doesn't make sense in English. No, it doesn't. Oh, it's, a, it's an idiomatic thing. So, fair rain is the... What verb form? Infinitive. Infinitive. <laughs> to, yeah. To, to bear, bear fruit. fruit. Apa het al tu, then apart from, apart from yourself. What does that mean? You're not able to bear fruit. By yourself. By yourself. Yeah. And then if you don't okay. remain? That's right. So if that you not if you do not abide in the vine. I understood that, but when you said yeah. apart from yourself. I yeah, that's that's taking it too wooden literally. Okay. <laughs> okay. But we'd say you're not able to bear fruit by yourself. Okay. If you're not abiding in the vine. Well, or by you? itself, actually, not yourself, itself. In other words, the 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 branch cannot bear fruit from itself. Alto is itself, not yourself, but itself. Apart from itself. In other words, by itself. It's okay. interesting though that the branch does bear fruit. Because, I mean, whether or not it's because of the vine, right. it's an interesting privilege That's right. that the branch has. Yeah. That the vine, that, I mean, the vine supports. Yeah. Vine. And like one guy put it, you know, the branch doesn't do any work, it just sits there. It's the vine that's pushing all the goodies into the branch. And that's, the, and that's why Jesus used that analogy, I think. But the important thing is he's talking to the eleven and he's telling them, you won't bear fruit apart from continuing to abide in me. You have been, but you have to continue. Okay, verse 5. Okay. I'm 
myself am Yeah, the vine. Yeah, okay, that's the vine. <laughs> I myself am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever remains in me, and I in him, um, I'll be thus again. No, not the same. No, it's not. Um, it, this is a pronoun. Case it would be he now if yeah that down in the, in, in the note he explains it this is a pronoun that is really clumping together the one abiding in me and I and him he in other words he's now making the relative pronoun clause and he's lumping that he's, he has defined the, the thing and now he just sticks that in okay he will bear much fruit okay. um, because Apart. Apart. Um, Chorus Enlu is uh, idiomatic way of saying apart from me. Okay, apart from me, um, you're not able to bear anything. Yeah, or you're not able to do you nothing. Can't do anything. Okay. Well, we would say it in English, you can't do anything. Do anything. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, where, very, yeah. Yeah, Pres third, 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 third singular present act of the day. He bears. Yeah. He bears fruit. He bears much fruit. Paul. Good. Yeah, notice I am the vine, you are the branches. Uh, the one abiding in me, and I in him. Notice the, 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 the double condition. He's abiding in me, I'm abiding in him. This one bears much fruit. Who talks? Notice. So you've got Hutos and a Kanos, this and that. So he's saying this one. Or we might translate he, but this one bears much fruit. Who? He who abides me and I am. This one bears much fruit. Because, apart from me, not able to do nothing. You are not able to do nothing. And again, in Greek, that's good that, that's good Greek, bad English. We would say you're not able to do anything. He would say they say for instance, you're not able to do nothing. You is a plural. Yes, you plural. Because he's talking to the group. Yeah. See there he's turned there he 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 gave the principle in the singular. Mm -hmm. He who abides. But then he applies it to the group. Apart from me, none of y'all can do anything. Yeah. Uden is anything? Yeah, it's nothing. Uden is nothing. But we would translate it anyway. So you cannot do nothing. Right. Well, Literally. Like two do That's right. It's, a, it, it's an infinitive. You cannot so do nothing. Right. <laughs> so when we translate, like we translate obviously not double negative. Right. Would we do, you can do nothing? Or no, we say you can't do anything. Most likely is how we would really translate it. really can't do anything. Right. Yeah, you absolutely <laughs> can't do anything. Okay, verse 6. He is cast out is as, as the branch and withers. Uh -huh. Yeah, and he withers, uh huh? And he withers. And is gathered and gathers them and they are thrown into the fire and burned. Good. This is the real troublesome verse. <laughs> Notice third class condition again. If anyone does not abide in me. And um, the significance of that again is at on plus the subjunctive. May or may not be true. But assuming it is true, the failure to abide in me. Then you have the next clause. 
Eb Blathe from Bala. So what is Eb Blathe? Yeah, it's an heiress. Good. Yeah. An heiress? Passive. Passive. It is thrown out. Third person, singular, heiress, passive. But why an heiress? Well, they have a uh, good discussion on it below, so we won't dwell on that. Um, but it's a... It's, it's a you know, it's a poetic way of saying it, or you know, a, a, a literary device. But they're thrown out as similar to, that's the idea, we're, we're, we're doing a simile here. Figure speech, simile. They're thrown out in the same way as the branch. And it withers. And they notice that, and, and there's a series of events going on. It's thrown out, it withers, and they gather it, and that notice the sunagusin, that's a nice third plural present active and negative. And they gather out of them, the branches that have been thrown out, they gather them, and into the fire they cast, and they are burned. The uh, uh, the translation is simple. The interpretation is difficult. Um, often people take this verse and say, okay, they are burned, therefore they go to hell, therefore this is loss of salvation or not saved. Therefore, verse 2 must be cut off. They take verse 6 and read back to verse 2. What I found in my own study of it is verse 2 looks at the spring, verse 6 looks at the fall. This is the winter pruning. This is a whole different event, a whole different issue. It's, verse 6 is not connected to verse 2 at all, time-wise or anything else. And that's the mistake in a lot of interpretations of that. And that would correlate with the lifting up of that's the right. branch. You that's, right. That early spring. that's right. In the early spring, you lift it up. In the fall, in fact, fruiting branches get pruned off because they don't have fruit anymore. <laughs> so, you know, it's a whole different issue, but they've been fruitful. Um, I think his whole point in verse 6 is not loss of salvation, but just simply the idea that if you don't abide in me, you're like the branch that gets pruned off in the fall. It's just junk. You know, they pile them up in a pile, they haul them out, and they burn them. That's his whole point. In other words, the point is not the burning. The point is, you're like the branch that gets separated from the vine. That's his whole point. And he describes the process of what the branch experiences, but the focal point is not the burning. The focal point is the verses that follow. Because in verse 7, it says, If you abide in me... Notice again, third class condition. And my words, ta, premata. And notice here, premata has two accents. Does that change the meaning? Nah. It just, what happened is the last syllable pulled the accent over from the next word, from the mood. That's all. That's how I like to describe it. I mean, that's, that's not technically correct, but that's basically what happened. <laughs> and, uh, but then, anyhow, yeah. and my words, Rema Ta, and notice Rema has a great deal of emphasis, the nuance of Rema over and against Lego, or Logos, the word, spoken. is the spoken words, the things I have spoken to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my words in you abide, should abide. So if, notice the if, there's two subjunctives there. If you abide in me, and if my words abide in you. Ha. Again, that which, again, yeah, the relative pronoun, neuter. That which, if you might want, that whichever, if you should want, you might ask. I taste us there. And what is this genesita? It is? Knowing from 
No, it's not from Kanosko. It is, yeah, it's from Genomai. And it is the, what tense? Future. Future. It's got the sigma. And see, Genomai in the future switches over to an epsilon from the ELO. That's one of the characters of the future. The, so, the, 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 the gamma iota becomes gamma epsilon because that's the actual true stem of gamma. I. The, the present tense is an alteration from the stem. And then you've got the sigma for the future, sitai, and the, the, uh, the vowel in front of it lengthens to an eta. So that's how you end up with genesitai. And the itasis is what? Hmm? What was that? I taste that. Yeah, let's look at that. It's from I te o. I ask. Uh huh. But this is second person plural. Subjunctive. Subjunctive. No. 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 Is it future? Future. So that whichever one wants will ask. Is it future? <laughs> I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's okay, no, it's not. It's not a yeah, no, no, no. Sigma alpha, sigma alpha. There's some. 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 First of all, is it middle or passive? It's middle or passive. Oh, there's imperative. Imperative. I was just going to say that. Would that be imperative because the imperative? Sasta is imperative. Oh, yeah. So that's it. Ask what you want. Imperative. That's right. Ask. It's an imperative. Good. That whichever one. You ask. <laughs> and it will. So that uh, whichever or whoever at wants asks. No, but that which okay. you might want, because the thelate, the later is subjunctive. Okay, so that that means, which, if you should want it, you may or may not, but whatever you might want, ask. ask. And it will be to you. It will be given to you. So the, the the key to answer prayer is asking. asking. No. No, it's wanting. It's not wanting. It's abiding. It's, it's abiding. abiding. Oh. <laughs> it's abiding. That's right. The key to answer prayer. Now, of course, James tells us you don't have because you don't ask. So you do have to ask, but it doesn't do any good to ask if you're not abiding. And you have to ask for the right motives. That's right. right. And to have the right motives, you gotta abide. Right. It's all, okay. it's all interconnected. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, let's see. We're, we're, we just did my verse. You didn't have to. Prepare no, no. Actually, prepare. actually, let's uh, let's stretch ourselves a little bit here, and go to John 17 and the text. What have we been doing? Which is that's my right now. Okay. Well, okay, you can look on. <laughs> hey, hey, look at that. You want to do cheat level? Sure. And the reason I do this is so that you can get familiar with how to uh, use this thing. And again, I know that some of these vocabulary words you don't have, so I'll uh, help you with them.
La is from La Leo. Yeah, these things Jesus spoke. Uh huh. Yeah, good. And um, and that's from Epiro. And so he raised, raised his eyes uh -huh. to the heavens, saying, "Father, Father." Um, oh man. Now notice. Look at the whole clause there. The whole phrase. Hey, Hora. Y'all know what hour is, right? The day. The no, hour, no, it's the hour. Yeah, the hour, yeah. And this is from Erkamai. Yeah, the is, hour has come. Yeah, the hour has come. Um, glorify, no, mm -hmm. something. Yeah, doxasan, and that's it. That's in the imperative. So it's we call it an imperative of entreaty. Glorify your son. Uh huh. Glorify your son. Yes. That. Um, and all that, huh? that the Son may glorify you? That's right. Doxase is the subjunctive. Subjunctive. Good. Very good. Does that glorify your Son or the Son? <laughs> um, the Su there oh, yeah. goes with oh, yeah. Tom Young, so it would be your Son. Okay? Verse 2. Cathos, just as. Mm -hmm. right. And Adokas is from Didomi. Yeah. Didomi. I get it. And it's a, uh, you got a. Good, yeah. Just as. And it is a perfect. It just says, you gave. Exousian authority. Yeah. No. Alton. Alto, just as you gave to him authority, authority over all flesh. Yes, good. Authority over all flesh. And the reason we go with authority over all flesh is because passes sarcos is genitive. Given to him. Yeah. Dose, again from did I mean once again, this is a future subjunctive yeah. that he might give, um, he, might, he might give to them eternal life. That's right. So just as you gave him authority over all flesh in order that everything which you gave to him, he might give to them eternal life. And the idea there is all those whom you have given to him, all the all the people. That's right. Okay. Verse 3. Um, uh, but. Uh, or and. Or in this and case. Uh, How te. In him? Is it no. Or, this is from. Oh, who talks? This. This, this yes. Uh, uh, but this um, is the eternal life. Mm hmm. Now notice here, eternal life is, the eternal is still, it's in the front, but it's got the article in front of it, so it's still attributive. Yeah, this is eternal life. And notice it has the article, but haute is a pronoun, so it is the subject, and hey, ionios, zoe is the predicate nominative. This is eternal life, go on. And this is eternal life that... Or in order mm -hmm. that, um, uh, third plural. Uh -huh. Good, third plural. Uh, they may know. That's right, they might know. Notice third plural. How do you know it's subjunctive? It's the, 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 the omega, the omega, instead of the omicron. Yes. Um, no wonder that doesn't like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, would, it would have been <laughs> gnoskusin. It would have been gnoskusin, the present active indicative. But it gets changed to the omega because it's in this present subjunctive. Uh, they so might know you. Uh, they may know you. The only. Only? Uh, uh, from so Lathanos. 
Yeah, it's sort of splitting it up here on this page. Uh, uh, the only uh, true God, uh -huh. true Dead. God, and the uh, the sent, mm -hmm. and the sent Jesus Christ. And uh, whom you have sent, oh. Jesus Christ, yeah. or normally translate, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Good. Yeah. Eternal life is knowing. Now, the significance, of course, is gnosko carries the nuance of experiential knowledge versus oida, which is the nuance of intellectual knowledge. But understand that there are places where the two words are used interchangeably. So it's not all that significant. But still, the idea is eternal life is knowing God. It's interesting that that verb has that same dual last right. in Spanish, but in English it doesn't. Right, yeah. Hmm. Interesting, yes, it is. And here's a, a significant thing again. What is Jesus' whole point? Eternal life is a relationship with a person. Mm -hmm. Just like in 1 John. Okay, verse 4. Okay. Um, <laughs> could you say something before you go to verse 4 about Christ not being Jesus' last name? I mean, it's Christ being going to go on. Right. Do you assume the article there? Uh, yeah, it, you, you assume the article. The reason it doesn't have the article is because it's a title and it doesn't require the article. Christos it means anointed one. It's the Greek word for the anointed one, Messiah. Messiah would be the yeah, Hebrew. Jesus Messiah. That yeah, would be the Hebrew. And if Jesus was praying in Aramaic, that's what he would have said. Yeah, he, he, he said Joshua Messiah. Yeshua Messiah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Hey, verse 4. Boy, um, let's see. I, um, let's see, it looks so, something about glorifying. Mm -hmm. And Oxasa is, and Oxasa is what tense? Aorist. Aorist, yeah, it's got the epsilon in the front and it's got the sigma alpha, so it's uh, Aorist tense, yes. I glorified you yes. on the earth. Uh huh. Um, the works. Okay, look down. And see now. Notice here, you got a little number three next to it. He doesn't have the cheater. Oh, you don't have the cheater <laughs> manual. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can go down and on verse four, uh, it uh, <laughs> tells you it's from teleao to complete, accomplish, to make perfect or fulfill. Okay. So, in the work, uh, uh, let's see, the work completed, uh, yeah, having completed, having completed, oh, having completed the work, um, which you, that don't cuss again, that's the perfect, yeah, you, from, did I mean, you, uh, Mm -hmm. um, you know that it's about culture. Oh, yeah. Now I know what it's for, I can't remember what it's To do or perform? Uh, that I did. No, it's the subjunctive once again. Oh, my do. From Poya. So that I might, yeah, the work and all that, that I might do. So I've done the task you gave me to do. Verse 5. Okay, I now glorify. Yeah. Parse soup. That answers the question. Alright, so not possible. What case is it? Nominative singular. So now you glorify me. Oh, so it's just pushed to the end. Yeah, it's been pushed to the end. So you glorify me now. Now you glorify me. Father. Let's see. Parl with the data. Alongside of or in conjunction with. Yeah. Uh, with um, Santo. Yourself. Mm -hmm. 
With you yourself? Yeah, with yourself. With yourself. Yeah. So, no, she says, so he said, now, now you glorify me, Father, with yourself. Oh, with yourself, okay. Um, Alongside of yourself. <laughs> yeah. Alright, well, so we've got. Is that, is that going to be like with the glory? Mm -hmm. Yes. There is the dative of. Sorry, with glory. Yeah, with the glory. With the glory. Uh, which. Now, far step from echo. Echo. Then it's an arrest. But which person is it? That's the key. Is that the third? No. Nope. First, which First. I had. Okay. Which I have before. Uh, which I had before the world. Mm -hmm. uh, what's that? That two there. A nine is to be infinitive form of a me. Okay, to be with you. Yeah. What was that two there before? Ah, oh, good, yes. What do you do with that two before the time? Describe a letter. Mm -hmm. Pros, see the pra there, which I had pra to, it's the, it's the article with the preposition in. We have a prepositional phrase. So, what goes with the pra to? And that is ani. The infinitive. It's a prepositional phrase with an infinitive. It's, a, it's an infinitive construction. So, the glory which I had before the world was, prior to the existence of the world. Okay. So the two just goes with the pra. Right. The two goes with the pra, and it forms a prepositional phrase. Okay. And the uh, and, and it's it's really pra to a nine. Uh, but actually, the two there, the world came into being. But uh, so before it came into you know before coming into existence. The world. Okay. So it's a weird construction. Maybe with the parasoid. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do with the parasoid? Mm, with, with you. With you. See. Okay. Now, rearrange the sentence. He's saying, "Glorify me together with the glory which I had with you before the world came into being. Okay. Shared glory with God the Father prior to creation." That's what he's saying. He's saying, give me back the glory that we shared in the past. And the use of para there has the idea of, again, Jesus is separate from the Father, and yet he is sharing in these things with the Father. There is a presence there. Which you see in Revelation 4 and 5. On the, on the throne platform is the Father sitting in the throne, and the Son standing next to him being worshipped by the angels, and they're saying... Y'all are worthy. And so you see that shared glory right there in Revelation 4 and 5. Exciting stuff. <laughs> Next. Um, I revealed your name mm -hmm. to the men whom you gave me from the world. Mm -hmm. Good. You were on a mm -hmm. as Kai and Moi. And, <laughs> and my. Uh -huh. And to me or my. Uh -huh. And to me. And you were to me those you gave. And uh, your word of the world. Tete, this is a perfect from. Oh, I'm looking at that. I went back to the. Oh, you went to the wrong one. I went to the wrong one, actually. Uh, completed? From. Hmm? To keep. To keep or guard. Guard, keep. 
Yeah, yeah Tayrock. And you kept your word or something? And, and, and now notice the, what person is it? That they, Raycon, third plural. Good. Yeah. So see, it says, uh, uh, I manifested your name to the men you've given me. Yeah. In, that you've given me in the world. Okay. They were yours. That's the idea of soy asan. They were yours. They belong to you. And to me, you gave them. Altus again is the accusative plural. The yeah. Your Correct object of you gave. You gave. You gave them to me. Your word. And your word. They have kept. Perfect tense. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Verse 7. Now. Egnokan. They know. From Gnosko. And, and it's the perfect. Right? And they have come to know that all things whatsoever you gave to me is from you. Because the words which you gave to me, I have given to them. Yeah, the spoken words. And they Functioning as a subject now, they, Elevon, they received from Lombano. They received and they know truly, truly, this is truly, this is the adverb. They know truly that with you, or from you, para, from your side, exelthon, they came or I came. I came. I came from you and at this two son, they believed, good, they have believed, that you me sent. You, subject, sent me, accusative, direct object. Huh? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's do, let, let's do one more there. And, uh, and notice, the key is what? Paying attention to case and the person a number on the verbs. So you keep a track of what's the subject and what's not and all that kind of stuff. And of course the tense, the verb tense. Um, let's see, where, where are we at now? Yeah, no, verse 9. Okay. I concerning them, eroto, asking. I am asking concerning them, not concerning the world I am asking, but concerning the ones which you gave to me. Because, because they are yours. Because they're yours. Because they're yours. Yeah. Yeah. So shared possession. And my things, the things of me, Emma, my things, all these things, all my things are, are yours. So. Now, just a minute though. <laughs> the things, ta, panta, estin. You remember that? Why is it estin and not the plural? <laughs> yeah, because remember, you always have the singular a me with neuter plural subjects. So, yeah. And all my things, uh, are yours and yours are mine, Emma. And Ed Doc Sasamet, my? No, it's glorified. I have been glorified. Notice the perfect tense again, Dead Doc. In them, in them. Yeah, in them. And it could be by means of them or in the, in the sphere of them. This in could be a lot of different things. Okay? Hmm? And I'm 
Uketi, no longer I am in the world, and they in the world are. Yes, they are in the world, and I cross said Arkamai, and I am coming to you. What's cross? Huh? And I, Kai Ego, Kai, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Te Rey Son, keep them. Keep them. Keep them. Parse this. Um, it is. It is. Um, it is a, uh, imperative. It is imperative. An heiress imperative. In the name. So second. Keep them in your name. Yeah. Second. Yeah. In other words. Yeah. Yeah. So he's saying keep them. Yeah. It's a. It's a. It's a. Again, we call it an imperative of entreaty. It's not a command, but he's requesting. Keep them in your name. Which you gave, you gave to me. In order that, Hosin, subjunctive, they might be. One, so that they might be him, that's one, just as we are. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Uh, we'll close up here.